So we're going to go through, there's, there's different types of ligands. The ligands are um, <coughs> classified by the number of lone pairs they have, so the number of dated chlorine bonds that they can do. The pair. simplest ones, so they've all got to have lone pairs on them. Monodentate ligands have one lone pair on them that they can use to form a dated chlorine bond or chlorine. So, for example, e.g., a simple one would be the chloride ion. The chloride ion, Cl minus, obviously he's got a lone pair that he could form a dative covalent bond with. Another common one as a molecule is going to be water. Water we know on the O has got, he's actually got two lone pairs, but he can only ever, if they're on the same atom, he can only ever use one to form the coordinate. So, so if I'm going to put a little arrow next to the lone pair, remember an arrow shows a coordinate bond. An arrow shows a coordinate bond. Another common one is ammonia that we'll be using, ammonia NH3. He's got a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen that he can use to form a coordinate bond with. Another interesting one is actually the cyanide ion. It is, yeah. Cyanide ion there. And another, the final one that we'll do is the hydroxide ion. OH minus, he's got a lone pair of electrons from the oxygen. Oh, the cyanide. So, even, so just be just be clear that even though I can have two lone pairs on one atom, <coughs> I can only have one coordinate bond <coughs> per atom. So these all monodentate ligands, because they all have only one lone pair that they can use to form a coordinate yeah, bond. Water's, water's got two lone pairs, yeah. but you can only use one to form a. Is that why? Case with everything. Because yeah, because if I'm a metal ion. No. Well, it would mean, it, well, okay, it would mean, say it's copper, it would mean if I've got water like that, something like that, it would mean the other lone pair would have to be used in some sort of double bond way, and you don't get that going on, so don't worry. I mean, it, it is, if, if, you, if you wanted to go on and do chemistry as a degree, then you could talk about that. Yeah, like, so we would do that. Let's <laughs> go. Two lone pairs of electrons on a separate atom. Yeah. Oh, so, when you were yeah, they yeah. can't have the, so a bidentate ligand cannot have the two lone pairs on the same atom. So that would be like water, where we said we had two lone pairs on oxygen. Doesn't it's only a, a one. So you're a monitor. Well, can we, yeah, I have so like two lone pairs. So yeah, so I've got at least, I've got at least in me two atoms with lone pairs. <laughs> yeah, so a bidentate ligand. When we draw something, you'll see what I mean, hopefully. Bidentate ligands have two lone pairs of electrons, but these are on different So your most common type of uh, bidentate ligands, which you come across, is they're going to be, a lot of them are organic compounds. So you have your carbon CH2, CH2, but then on one end you have an amine group, and also on the other end you have an amine group. And each nitrogen has got a lone pair of electrons. So this is called 1, 2, Diamino ethane, but it's often shortened to EN. 
So often it's just called the end ligand because this is very, very common. It's like um, like one two n, or one two. Oh, thank you. Oh, no. well, that was called. Um, uh, this is called, that whole thing is called one two diamine everything, <laughs> but as a shortened often when we shorten it, we just <coughs> often use en. Okay. Yeah, so you've got two amino groups. Oh, have I done? Oh, yeah, I was really confused. Oh, I was just like, wait, what is this? That's a bit lame, isn't it? Okay, diamine anything. Um, the other one is the ethane dioate. Iron. So this is an iron. So we start with a dicarboxylic acid, but we've removed the hydrogens. So on each of these oxygens is a lone pair of electrons that he can donate. So if I was forming a complex iron with these guys, my metal plus would be here. That lone pair would be donated that lone pair will be donated. And can you see now I've got my circle? Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is why it's so stable and much harder to remove. Would it actually form a circle? Like, would it actually form a cyclic compound? Yeah, that bit is cyclic. Yeah. It would? Yeah. How do you decide how many coordinate bonds to form with the metal? Oh, when we look at the transition metals, we'll look at that. Yeah, it's different. Different transition metals like different number of coordinates. Um, bonds. So copper, for example, often forms four, um, but it can it can form six. So tridentate ligand these must have uh, three lone pairs. Can't spell three. Three lone pairs of electrons each on separate atoms. So, uh, example, tridentate ligands actually aren't that common um, because normally they come in even numbers, but an example would be if I kind of draw in three, well, I'll try and draw in three. Yeah, This guy is like a, uh, that's your central carbon. And then you've got your three arms coming on. Each arm has a nitrogen atom, like so. So he can bond. So if I've got my metal here, he can go like so. Um, other example, should we just do multi-dentate ligands now? Uh, so multi-dentate ligands, um, the one that often comes up is something called EDTA, which is ethylene tetraacetic acid. Um, I'll give you that. Uh, right, so this guy actually has, he can form six coordinate bonds. Again, you don't need to know the structure of this, it's just worth uh, knowing. So, Is that the name? Yeah, ethylene diamine tetracetic acid. Did you just pull that out of
Okay, so this can form six coordinate bonds. So it can bond using the lone pair there, lone pair there, lone pair there, lone pair there, but also the lone pair on that nitrogen and the lone pair on that nitrogen. So it can form six coordinate 